good morning. I've got a few announcements here from me uh, that's been put together for this Sunday. Uh, as you know, uh, we're recording this for y'all's use at home, but some of the upcoming events, Central Connect, the emergency shelter meals scheduled for March 28th. If you're on that list, you should have received an email from Ashley Cook regarding how it can be, how you can help financially with the month's meal. So the Kalers are preparing in individually packed meals to be dropped off at the shelters, and the members are asked not to serve at the shelter. It's call the office if you have any questions. Lads to leaders, this, the convention has been officially canceled. We will not be participating in any upcoming travel dates. We know that some of our kids have really worked hard preparing and will find a way to showcase their efforts soon. Sarah Dobbs' baby shower had to be, sadly we had to cancel that shower, but thank you to everyone that dropped off the gifts at the building. You can still drop them off at the office if you have one Monday through Friday from 9 to 3 p.m. And we'll make sure they get to them. The Jesus Kids and God's Tots Easter Egg Hunt scheduled for April 5th is canceled. The Tennessee Children's Home Spring Food Drive canceled for now, but we will follow up and do this at a later date. The Treehouse Rotations, we will pick up where we left off when services resume, starting with Team Kim Rotation 25. The Sunday of Service, please email any ideas for Sunday of Service projects to the office. The kickoff is scheduled for April 26th. Our plan is to keep this date on the schedule, but we'll evaluate as it gets closer to that time. The graduation fellowship meal is uh, Sunday, the May 17th. I'll let the office know if you have a, a high school or college student that will graduate this year and email the uh, office your child's plans for next year and a picture for the bulletin board. Our plan is to keep the date on schedule, but we'll evaluate as it gets closer to time. And uh, another thing that was, uh, we've thought of is on the offering, you know, the church's business still continues, is please mail your contributions to the church office. The address is 200 25th Street Northwest, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37311. And uh, that concludes the announcements. Now we'll do the uh, prayer, I will review the prayer list and then we'll do the prayer. Congratulations to Cody and Rachel Flowers who were married last weekend. Pray for them as they begin their life together as husband and wife. Our sympathy is extended to Thomas Richmond and family on the passing of his father, Paul Richmond. He passed away March 17th. Uh, the details are in the uh, Cleveland paper, but the visitation is from 1 to 7 p.m. Uh, today at Companion, and the graveside services is going to be Monday at noon. Uh, the sympathy of, uh, is extended to Sandra Fansler on the passing of her brother-in-law, Randall Tatum, who passed away on March 11th. His wife, Norma Tatum, uh, we're happy to report, was restored last week. Please keep Jeff and Brianna Griffith in your prayers as they are in the process of adopting a two-year-old boy named Sky from South Korea. They will be soon traveling out of the country to pick him up. Congratulations to Gary and David Griff Griffith on the birth of their grandson, Trip Bradley, on March the 6th. Proud parents are Ben and Corian Bradley and big sister Blakely. But Trip was born with cranial stenosis which means his skull was joined together before he was born, and in a couple or three months, he may need surgery if it does not correct itself. Uh, Roger and Kim Fort request prayers for Roger's brother, Doug Fort. He had surgery Tuesday to get a pacemaker, and he's doing well and recovering at home. Rhonda Morgan is scheduled for uh, gallbladder surgery tomorrow, Monday. Uh, a person we know, Larry Watson, is dealing with health issues. We want to pray for him and his family. Uh, Leah Richmond had a good doctor's appointment at 
at Vanderbilt this week, and she's scheduled to go back in April. Johnny Triplett has an appointment concerning his heart valve replacement in April. Uh, please pray for our members at Central that are undergoing treatment for cancer, Fred Davis, Carol Long, and Betty Young. Uh, pre please remember our families and friends in the community that are undergoing treatment for cancer, Olivia Weatherford, Mason Cobble, Grayson Mosier, Steve Newport, Sue Kenny, Brian Sims, Heather Robertson, Shelley Miller, Mickle Price, and Rachel F Flowers. We also have another request from Jackson Igu for health issues, and then we learned uh, recently of Peggy Brandon's mother passed away last week, and we don't have any details on funeral. And in a personal note, I want to thank people for the cards and, and notes and emails for the passing of my second brother this year. It was, uh, uh, the funeral was held uh, last week, so we appreciate those. Now, let's bow and pray, please. Father, we thank you that you have given us another day of life to hear, your, hear a lesson from your word today. Just now we would ask that you would be with us and be with these folks that's mentioned, the ones that are, are dealing with cancer and having various treatments. We would ask that you would be with them and the doctors as these treatments are administered and we would ask that these treatments would be something that would help them sustain or get back and have a, a good life. Lord, for the ones that have recently lost loved ones, we'd ask you to be with them and their families and comfort them as only you know how. We'd ask you to be with the families that they will be comforted. Lord, for this situation we're in here in this country with this virus, we would ask that you would be with the people that it is affecting, the families, and Lord, the ones around that are dealing with just keeping the supplies coming, be with them and their families. And that you, we would ask you to give us a measure of, of intelligence that we would do the correct thing, that we would do this self-isolation when we need to and not be watching out for folks that doing the sneezing and all. And if, if the things required, we'd ask it they would seek the medical attention and it would be successful. Lord, we would ask you to be with us as we look at the worship services that we soon will be able to meet together as most would, would desire, but Lord, we would also ask that people would be patient during this time and do as they should do, and as we've learned in the Bible that there was a time of quarantine back in the Old Testament times when various diseases were known and that it was best for the ones affected to not be around the others. We know that you're in control and everything will come out as it should be. Lord, we'd ask you to be with us in all that we think, say, and do in the coming weeks. We would ask it, we would look to you for guidance. This prayer I ask in your son's name. Amen. Good morning, church. I uh, just wanted to take a, a minute and uh, before we sing some songs together this morning, just talk about singing um, in the times that we're in right now. You know, oftentimes we think only of singing when we're happy and times are good. But singing brings strength for trials. When it comes out of Acts 16, Paul and Silas are unjustly imprisoned for the sake of the gospel. And what do they do while they're in prison? They sing. Our persecuted brothers are showing us the truth we see in Acts 16. Singing strengthens us and helps us persevere in the face of trial. If it can strengthen them in the face of these trials, what can it do for us? Even in suffering, singing has such a unique way of bringing our hearts, soul, mind, and strength together to focus entirely and completely on God. In this age of distraction and what we're going through right now, singing grabs the attention of all of our senses and focuses us on God. 
In Revelation 7, 9 through 10, the Apostle John describes a glimpse of eternity with a great multitude of people from every tribe, peoples, and languages singing before the Lamb. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. So this morning, wherever you are at watching this video, if it's in your home, uh, if you're in the kitchen or you're out on the porch, let's praise God and sing out with all of our heart. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Counselor, comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost our way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost our way. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own. Here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer, for I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing in his love, I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that throne above, oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way groweth clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Before I have our prayer and scripture this morning, I would like to read a message from the shepherds. Good morning, Central family. We hope that each of you is doing good and feeling healthy. We want you all to know that we love and care for you. We know this is a very strange time in regards to what's going on with the COVID-19 virus. Please know that our faith in our Heavenly Father is not wavering. We trust in Him and His promises. We know that you have concerns about dismissing our services at this time. Please know this decision was not an, and is not easy for us to make. This decision is not based solely on what our government has said about folks gathering. We certainly listen to this advice and try to be educated as to what is wise to do regarding the safety and well-being of our family at Central. But there is no question that God is our overall leader and is who we most want to please. God has given us common sense and discernment as tools to use when decisions like these have to be made. God certainly knows about diseases and viruses. He knows about the usage of quarantining, such as in the case of leprosy and other communicable diseases. 
He knows that the wisdom in social distancing. So we have made the decision not to meet based on medical advice as it relates to the spreading of this virus. We want to be considerate of not only our family at Central, but also our overall community. Slowing down the spread of this virus is very important. We want to do what we can in this regard and not ignore the obvious signs that have been seen in other countries. Please know that we want to meet together as soon as possible. But for now, we are canceling all services and church activities for the month of March through and including April 1st. We will monitor this situation on a weekly basis and inform the congregation via phone, email, texting, and Facebook as to what our plans are regarding meeting together in April. Please join us in praying about this situation. Pray for our country's leaders, state and local leaders, as they are making tough decisions as well. Pray for our medical personnel around the country as they deal with this on a daily basis. Pray for all those who are dealing with the virus at this time. In closing, use this time to bolster your Bible reading and prayer time. Please help us in taking care of one another by staying in contact with family and friends via phone and, and or FaceTime. We love you and are praying for you. Now let's have our prayer. Father, we are so thankful for this wonderful day that you've blessed us with, Father. Father, we're thankful for this time that we can meet together. Father, we're not meeting in our normal place of worship, but we are meeting as your people. And we are so thankful that we are able to do that. Father, we pray that you would give us strength during this time. Help us, Father, to not lose our faith, but gain our, or grow our faith in you. Father, help us to read and study our Bibles, to pray to you more fervently. And Father, we just give you the praise for all that you've given to us, the blessings that we have. Father, we ask that you would be with our government officials. So many, Father, are having to make tough decisions. We pray that you would bless them in that, help them to be wise in the things that they do. And Father, we certainly want to thank you for all those that are in the front lines as, as medical staff that are trying their best to uh, help the people that are suffering with this uh, virus. We pray that they too will make uh, wise decisions in what they do and help them to uh, not contract the disease themselves so that they can continue helping uh, this country. And Father, uh, we just thank you so much for your son Jesus and all that he's given us. Father, we know our hope is in him and that we have our sins forgiven through the blood that he shed. Uh, help us, Father, to be more like him each and every day as he helped so many as he, while he was here on earth. Father, help us to do the same and to uh, stay in contact with those that we love, making sure that they're okay. Father, we ask that you would continue to bless us throughout this service. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today is from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. Hebrews 13, verse 5 and 6. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Restore my spirit, Lord, I need restored. My heart is weary, please help me, dear Lord. I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, or oh, restore my soul. Revive the fire, Lord, deep in my soul. Stir my desire to work in your fold. Light in my heart, dear God, your zeal grown cold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, or oh, restore my soul. Renew my courage, Lord, it needs restored. My cup is empty, refill it 
dear Lord. Replace all doubts and fear with faith so bold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, or oh, restore my soul. Good morning, everyone, and again, thank you so much for joining us, uh, being with us online and, and watching this service. We hope and pray again that everyone is doing well, that you're staying safe. Uh, this is, of course, a, a first for most of us, uh, having to stay home and not being able to come to the building to see one another, and it's a, it's a new concept, it's a different concept, and it's, uh, hopefully it's a new concept that, that won't last too long. Uh, but nevertheless, we are extremely thankful for outlets such as these. Uh, what would we do if we didn't have the online communications uh, that we have, the social media outlets that allow us to still connect uh, to one another and to be uplifted? And we hope and, and plan to be able to use all of our social media and our online outlets to do just that, uh, to keep us all connected and to keep us uplifted and encouraged during this time. You know, no doubt our lives have, over the last couple of weeks, have changed a lot. Uh, the, the elephant in the room, the COVID-19, the coronavirus, you know, we, so many questions of what comes next or what happens next and, you know, how long is this going to last? We're trying to figure all of this out. Leadership around the world is trying to figure it out. Doctors and nurses and so many, uh, you know, researchers and scientists, so many people trying to figure all of this out and, uh, bring this crisis under control. I want to ask you this morning, I want you to do two things, and I want to remind you of two things. Number one, I want to ask you to continue to pray for our leaders uh, in our world or in our country and across the world. I know you're already praying, but continue to do so, to pray for our leaders and the doctors and uh, the nurses, all those in the medical field working tirelessly uh, to bring all of this under control, to figure it all out. and Pray that this virus can be brought, again, under control. I also want to ask you to continue to pray uh, for our church leaders, and not only our shepherds, but those, again, around the world, because they are making some decisions they have never had to make before uh, right now, and we definitely want to keep them in prayer. So I want you to do those two things. And then I also want to remind you of two things. I want you to remember that in this time when we can't be together physically, I want you to remember that the church is always bigger than the building. We're bigger than this. We're stronger than this. Um, and I think we've seen that in the last couple of weeks. I think we're going to continue to experience that and hopefully that bond and that, that longing to be together will continue to grow in our hearts. And number two, I want to remind you that God is more powerful that he is bigger than what we're going through right now. And that's really what the lesson's going to be about this morning. That's what I want to remind you of, uh, the power of God and continuing to put our complete trust in him. I hope you have your copy of God's Word available. I hope you have it there with you, whether it's a phone or a tablet or you have it in print. And I want you to open to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. You know, Mark is an interesting writer. We've actually been studying Mark's gospel in my uh, Bible class on Sunday mornings and kind of yeah, how it you know, relates to discipleship. And, and one thing that we have noticed when it comes to Mark's gospel is that Mark is an action writer. Mark loves to go from one situation to the next, from one extreme to the other, from one story to the next. And he uses that word immediately that word immediately he uses it over and over again and that just really shows us what kind of writer or action writer Mark really is and he wants us to see not just Jesus from a theological standpoint not just Jesus uh, in his teachings but more so he wants to show us Jesus in action so in Mark chapter 4 we have a sample of what Mark gives us, a, again, a sample of Jesus' public ministry. And in that ministry, Mark gives us the f uh, four of, of the many parables of Jesus. Again, Mark just gives us four. With the most famous of them, of course, we're most familiar with the parable of the sower. But all four parables really are about, they're about seeds. They're about growing. They're about our personal growth. They're about growing in His Word and growing uh, the kingdom of God. But... As you get to the end of chapter 4, after you have these four parables, this public ministry, you get to the end of chapter 4, 
I want you to kind of listen to what Mark says. He kind of transitions again from public ministry to a more private ministry between him, Jesus, and his disciples. And what happens next in the story is what I want us to remember. So I want to start reading in verse 33 of Mark chapter 4. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. That day when evening had come, he said to his disciples, this is Jesus speaking, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. And a great windstorm came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that, so that it was nearly swamped. So I want you to understand that this great storm that come up out of the Sea of Galilee wasn't something planned, okay? And it really wasn't something out of the ordinary. Storms like this really came up all the time in the Sea of Galilee. It's because of the, the layout of the land and, and so many other factors. But they, they come up out of nowhere, so you really had to be prepared. If you were to go to the Sea of Galilee, you really had to be prepared or your life could be in danger. So let's make some quick application uh, to this part of the story. And, and we'll pick up uh, reading here in just a moment because it's a great reminder for us all because we too, have storms that come up in our lives. You know, I would dare say that everyone in the sound of my voice right now, you know, we, we've, we've all been through some storms in our life. You've been through some storms in your life. In fact, we're probably, I would dare say, going through a storm right now in all of our lives. But you know those moments, you're just going through life and, and all of a sudden you, you get that diagnosis that you weren't planning for. Um, you, you get laid off of, because of what's happening in our community. Just the fear of the unknown and how serious of, of what's going on right now, how, how serious that, that, that it can really be. So many storms that come into our life and all of a sudden our, our world is turned literally upside down and we feel like we're drowning. We, we feel like we just can't make it through. It's like we're sinking minute by minute by minute. We all have those storms. Let me ask you, where was Jesus, what we've read so far, where was Jesus the entire time? He was in the boat, wasn't he? Another question, whose idea was it to get into the boat and to go to the other side? It was Jesus, wasn't it? Who was it that said, let us go to the other side? It was Jesus. Listen, Jesus doesn't invite us into a boat. He didn't invite his disciples into a boat thinking that, hey, we're not going to make it. He knew that no matter what happened, they were going to make it to the other side because it was Jesus that said, let us get into the boat and let us go to the other side. Where is Jesus when we go through every storm in, in life? He's in the boat with us. He doesn't leave us. A, a great promise, uh, what Kevin read a few moments ago in Hebrews 13 and verse 5, we're, we're reminded that, that God will never leave us and that God will never forsake us. So it's, it's almost, when you're reading this story and you're reading the, the reaction of the disciples, it's almost as if the disciples forgot really who Jesus was. They forgot what Jesus was capable of. They allowed the fear of the storm to cause them to not see who was really in the boat with them. They caused the fear of the storm, you know, they, they caused it to forget, you know, I've got the Son of God in the boat with me. This was his idea. I mean, think about it. They've seen Jesus do some pretty cool stuff, pretty amazing things. You know, they've, Jesus has been going around healing people that are sick and people that are lame. You know, he's been speaking and teaching with authority, drawing crowds in. In fact, he's been even challenging the Pharisees. You know, this guy, he, he's pretty much proved that this guy is not someone to be messed with. And here is this storm, and all of a sudden they're panicking. So look in verse 38. Let's continue to read. So it says, Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Okay, so here they go. Okay, here they go. They're in panic mode. The panic mode is set in. Now, let's be honest, many of us have either done this ourselves or we've seen it here in the last few days going into panic mode. Verse 39, Jesus got up, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the waves, quiet, 
be still. The wind died down and it was completely calm. So because of Jesus, the great storm that we saw in verse 37 is now the great calm that we read about in verse 39. In verse 40, he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and they asked each other, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? I think it's interesting, at least in the translation that I use most often, the New American Standard, uh, it says in verse 40, why are you so afraid of the storm? And then when they see Jesus do what Jesus does in verse 40, 41, he says, you were very much afraid. I, I believe it's the NIV that says, uh, you know, you were afraid of the storm, but they are terrified of Jesus. They were afraid of the storm, but they're very much afraid. They're terrified of Jesus. In other words, what we're seeing is that they were afraid of the wrong thing. They were afraid of the storm until they, until they saw Jesus wake up, stand up, and start controlling the weather. And when they see Jesus start controlling the weather, they're absolutely terrified of Him. So how many times do we allow our circumstances to bring fear into our lives, to bring panic into our life, when Jesus says, if you knew who you served, if you knew who I was, if you knew what I was capable of, you would be less afraid. If you knew the power of God, you would be less afraid of the storm in your life and more afraid of Him. Because Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus was speaking to His disciples really about discipleship and going out and discipling other people and the kind of the challenges that they would face as disciples, as they're discipling. He says in Matthew 10, 28, Do not be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. You know, sometimes when... When we go through our storms, let's be honest, sometimes we're more afraid of the storm than we are of Jesus. We're more terrified of the storm than we are of Jesus. We're more worried about the storm. And, and again, Jesus, again, where is Jesus the whole time we're going through the storm? He's in the boat. He's in the boat with us. You know, it's always amazed me that, you know, when you read this story in, in Mark chapter 4, uh, this account of Jesus controlling the weather, it's always amazed me that Jesus was asleep in the storm when everybody else is losing it. You see, it wasn't the storm that woke Jesus up. Jesus was resting. It wasn't the storm. It was the faithlessness of his disciples that did. It was the, the unhealthy fear, the misdirected fear that they had in their lives. The idea here is that, you know, you've got enough faith to follow Jesus. So think about it. The disciples, they have, they have dropped everything. They have dropped family. They have dropped friends. They have dropped their careers. Uh, whatever it is that they were doing, they dropped their current lives and they began a new life following Jesus. They put all of their trust into Him. They believed in Him. So not only that, they're following him around from village to village to town to town and they're witnessing him do some pretty crazy things, some pretty radical things, some things that are drawing crowds in. He's doing things that are making some religious leaders mad. So there's a little bit of persecution. There's a little bit of trials that they're having to go through. So they're, but they're still following Jesus. And in fact, they have enough faith to actually get into the boat with Jesus. Let us go in. Let us go to the other side. They've got enough faith to get into the the boat. They have followed him so far through many, many trials and now all of a sudden this storm comes up out of nowhere and it seems as if they are losing what they had. It seems that the faith that they had, they're simply losing it. Now before we criticize too much of the disciples and blaming them for a weak faith, I think we're guilty of that as well. You know, sometimes what happens sometimes when the storms come into our lives is we simply forget who Jesus is. We forget how powerful He is. We forget what He is capable of. We forget really who is in the boat with us. You know, something bad happens and we, we want to say to, to Jesus, you know, wake up Jesus. You know, don't you even care what's happening in our world, what's happening in our community, what's happening in my life? Don't you care that maybe my marriage is failing, that I've lost my job, that my, that my finances are failing, that so much is going on? Don't you care that I'm lonely or I'm depressed? Or 
and we think for a moment that our problems are bigger than Jesus. Or maybe we think that they're so big that Jesus really can't take care of them. What did Jesus do when he awoke? He stood up. He told the wind to calm down. And he told the sea to be quiet. And they did. Jesus invites us into the boat and wants us to see, and wants to show us, wants to strengthen our faith and see that he is there through every storm that comes up. And he stands up and he says to the storm, you be quiet. Peace, be still. We are tempted in so many ways, in a lot of ways, to respond to the storms or to, to respond to the crisis maybe with fear rather than faith. You know, think in your life right now. Do some self-reflection. What storm are you going through that maybe you need to stop responding in fear and start responding in faith? What is it that you need to just quit worrying about and simply start trusting God more? Put more faith in Him. What is it that is in your life right now that you need Jesus to stand up in your life and say, peace, be still. And as, listen, as long as you and Jesus, as, as long as us and Jesus, you know, as long as we're all in the same boat, you're not going to sink with Jesus. You're not going to sink with Jesus. The storm will not overtake you. It will not control your life because, again, the Son of God is in the boat. I want to remind you as we close the lesson out uh, this morning that our God is a shepherd who loves us. He's a shepherd who cares for us deeply and he watches over us no matter what storm we go through in life. You know, Psalm 23 is a, is a psalm of, 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 um, of remembrance. It's a psalm that many people have, have memorized. It's a psalm that sadly we often only read at funerals, don't understand that, but it's a psalm that reminds us of the God that we serve. And I want to read it and help us to remind us that Jesus is always in the boat with us. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And listen to this, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Again, thank you for, for being here with us. We are so appreciative. Uh, we pray that, again, that you're uh, keeping up with what's going on here at Central uh, through Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, our website, so many different avenues that we're trying to take advantage of to make sure that we're all staying informed and that we're all uh, staying connected to one another. And we want you to know, while we're not going to have a formal invitation and where we stand and sing, unless you want to stand in your living room, you by all means can do that, but um, we want you to know that we are praying for you and if we can help in any way, if if you do have sin in your life and you need to talk with someone, you need someone to pray with you, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out to me, to reach out to one of our shepherds or to even call the office and they can uh, get in touch with us because we want to make sure again that, that everyone is staying healthy. They're staying spiritually healthy um, as well uh, during this time. Thank you. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. 
When clothed in his brightness, transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, his wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he would give his only Son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders, Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has bought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. At this point, we will partake of the Lord's Supper. Uh, hopefully, most of you have come by the building and picked up the little um, all-in-one personal communion kits. Uh, we'll be using these as of right now, and if you uh, run low or run out, please don't, for, don't hesitate to come by the building and pick up more. We've ordered and have several of these on hand. Uh, so again, make sure that you and your family uh, have plenty of these. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23 to help prepare our minds. Paul said, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Verse 27, he says, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself, in verse 28, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Christ established this memorial to keep him in memory. And so it is a time for us to reflect on that sacrifice that he gave for our sins. Paul says there again in verse 28 that it's a time for uh, self-examination. It's a time to look inward into our lives, our spiritual lives. And, 
and to make a decision to correct any sin that is in our life. It's times like these that we do a, a check on our spiritual hearts and to make sure uh, that they are in the right place, that they are in the right spot, if you will. So when we observe this memorial as we should, it should increase our faith, and it will increase our faith. It will give us the strength to overcome those difficult times that we will face in our lives. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the time that we have to spend together. Uh, Father, we pray that as we partake of this bread, we uh, know, Father, that it represents uh, your son's body that was on the cross. And I pray that we will take it in a manner worthy to you, that we will do some self-examination, some self-reflection. And Father, again, that we will uh, fix any sin that we have in our lives. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Now let's offer prayer uh, for the juice. Father, again, we love you. We thank you for uh, the sacrifice of your son. Father, we um, can't imagine uh, what Jesus went through uh, before the cross in his life and, Father, more so on the cross. And we are thankful that, that he did that for us. Uh, Father, the, the blood that was shed on our behalf. And I pray that as we partake uh, of this juice that we will uh, remember your son, that we will remember the sacrifice, and that we, again, will remember what it does to our lives, that it cleanses us from all of our sins. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I heard an old, old story, how Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the street of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Who's that walking down the road, carrying such a heavy load? Sinner, lay your burden down, cause you're walking down heaven's road. And when you're walking down heaven's road, you gotta lay down that heavy load. Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. 
I'm singing all the way. I got sunshine in every day. Won't you come along and join me on that heaven's road? Young folks walking hand in hand, singing with the angel band. Old folks ain't so tired no more, cause they're walking down heaven's road. And when you're walking down heaven's road, you gotta lay down that heavy load. Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the way. I got sunshine in every day. Won't you come along and join me on that heaven's road? Ain't no tears, no crying there. Ain't no sadness anywhere. Ain't got time to shed no tears cause we're walking down heaven's road. And when you're Walking down heaven's road, you gotta lay down that heavy load. Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the way. I got sunshine in every day. Won't you come along and join me on that heaven's road? As we close out our service this morning, we want to... Uh, I want to remind you of a couple of things. In Joshua chapter 1, God spoke to Joshua and said, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Also, I want to share with you a passage from 2 Timothy chapter 1. In verse 7, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. We want all of our members to, to feel the power of God at this time. We want you to understand that we, as your shepherds, are concerned about you and concerned about each and every member and also everyone in our community. If there is anything we can do to help you, please call any of us or call the office and they can get messages to us. We're here to help you, and we are expecting to be able to help people in time of need. At this time, let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything that you've blessed us with. Father, you've given us uh, so many things in this life. At this time, Father, we know that there are many people who are suffering and have experienced uh, death in, in some instances but are suffering from illnesses. We realize, Father, that uh, this uh, COVID-19 situation is not just uh, unique to the United States, but is a situation that is spread throughout much of the entire world. Many people are suffering. We pray, Father, that you will be with them. Father, be with those who are working to take care of these sick people. Pray that you'll give them the strength that they need to be able to take care of them as best as possible. We thank you for the medicines that are out there to be able to treat this and to help with the suffering. We pray, Father, that if it be your will, that uh, uh, there can be whatever developed to be able to stop the spread of this virus. Father, help us to do the things that we need to do to take care of each other. Help us to look out for our neighbors and friends and even people we don't know. We pray, Father, that you will keep our families safe. Pray that you'll keep those who respond to any series of crises that they have to deal with, Father, that they can have the strength to do that and that they can be safe as well. We thank you for all the medical people that we have in this, in this country and for their desire to take care of sick people. Father, we pray that you will help us to be able to reach out to those in our community. Help them to understand that we're here to help and that we have your message that we want to share with them. And help us, Father, to have the desire and the ability to spread your word and show your love in everything that we do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Nothing can. 